Goedemorgen. Waar is die mensen? Good morning, members. Good morning, colleagues. Morning time. We are here, we are here Mr. Paulson. I saw yesterday's video. Mr. Paulson, you are muted. Oh, okay. I'm unmuted now. The water suddenly just became clear. Uh -huh. We just need a few more hands. Oh, then. I'm ordering red overalls for all MPs. And they must imagine. be red in color. They must be red in yeah, color. Yeah, no, no other color. Imagine a blue overall. <laughs> oh, yellow. <laughs> Mr. Singh in a red overall. Well, look very good, eh? Hey, how are you? How are you? You are muted. Morning. Hey, I'm muted, yes. Hey, Mr. Singh. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. How are you doing? I've got a red overall for you, Mr. Singh. You know, yeah, I saw. Hey, sorry, I missed out yesterday, man. But we had NEC meeting and I had to present financials. So, oh, okay. Yeah, we're not like other parties; don't pay the workers and things like that. I keep my party up to date. No, that's very good, and you can account <laughs> for every single cent. Every penny. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Morning. I've never seen Honourable Singh without a tie, so you'll have to organise a red overall with a proper colour. So Honourable no, Singh. No, I've got a tie. I think today. No, no, I'm saying if if um, Honourable Paulson wants to give you a red overall, it's got to come with a proper collar so that you can wear your normal tie with it. Uh, yeah, as long as it's not an orange overall, I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got some orange ones to end out as the leader court. <laughs>
Good morning, Chair. Yes, we rested. Hope you are rested. Thank you. Okay, Honorable Phillips, good morning. Good morning, Chair. I'm smiling today a little bit. <laughs> okay, and <laughs> that's nice if you smile. Honorable Mdisa, good morning. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning to yourself and honorable members. Honorable Singh, we missed you yesterday. Good morning. Honorable Singh, good morning. You're on mute, Mr. Singh. Yeah, good morning, honorable person. Good morning, Chair. How are you? I'm cool, thanks, and you? Honorable very, very well, good thank morning. you. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Chair. I got cut off as soon as you said good morning. Oh, Sorry about yesterday. We missed you yesterday. I know, I know. I would have liked to be there, but I just had some other yeah. very important things. Thank you. Okay. We, we, we noted the apology. Honorable Gancho, good morning. Good morning, Chair, and good morning to everyone. Honorable Mbata, good morning. Morning, Chairperson, and morning to the honorable members and the department. Yes, good news. It's so good to have you. We are glad you are back in circulation. Good morning, Scotney. Good morning, Chair. Thank you. Yes, welcome back. Eh? Welcome back. Thank Deputy you. Minister, good morning. Good morning, uh, Chairperson, and good morning to uh, honorable members. And good morning, all the officials from the department. I see you here in numbers. Good morning, DDGs, everyone. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, Chair. Okay. Good morning, Chair. I thought, I thought you don't want to greet the Chair, all of you. Can we also welcome uh, Ms. Asuka and Advocate from the Parliamentary Legal Services? Good morning. Advocate. Good morning, Chair. I'm from the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Good, still, good morning, still everyone. Right. I'm confused. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. Jelega, can you fly the agenda? Colors. The agenda is as it is. Can I get a mover in the second of the agenda? I move, Chief. Uh, honorable person moving, Honorable um, Juno. I Good second. Man. You second it. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay, that's what it is. Do the apology that I get is of Honorable Brian is gonna log in at 10. Any other apology, Chineka? Yes, Chair, we have the apology from the Minister and the DG, as well as our parliamentary legal advisor. She's okay. got three meetings, but she said if there's anything that needs her attention, I should give her a Okay, then I think we'll rely on the state law advisor to also assist us. It's a shared service. Yeah. I'm glad the advocate is here as well. And then I believe the minister is the leader of the delegation. Deputy minister is here. She's here with us. And then together with the team, uh, the DG is on leave. Yeah, that's the apology that we get. Also, the apology of the minister, we got that chance. The deputy minister is leading the team. But also, this is an area of delegation. This is the champion. She's the political champion on this one. Welcome, deputy minister. And as I open, we had a marathon of public hearings all over the country. And I think I need to thank all of you colleagues for your hard work dedication, commitment, and then we finally had the communities. But there were the ups and downs, Deputy Minister, as we were moving throughout the country. You recall some of the stuff I'll share with you via the videos. Wherein 
The saddest part of it is when you meet community members, elderly people in particular will cry about the disservice they are getting from uh, these governments. Yeah. That was the most touching events that we met. We had a lot of them across the country. And then the other issue, like I always said, you know, people, when they see parliament, they see hope is their last resort. That's why we've agreed with the team of, of, because when we started, we started on a positive note. Like you remember in the Northern Cape, we even have senior DDGs from um, Department of Rural Development. And it's a pity, a uh, deputy minister, all these other issues as you deal with this matter, the most affected people are people in agriculture. But I'm glad that in terms of the bill, I think uh, moving forward, did you know that? Uh, yes, I think with your counterparts, you need to have a, uh, because this is the bill that at the end of the day, you will need to have concurrent uh, function with the other sector departments, including the, the, the SOEs. So that's the matter that will expect the department to take the lead in making sure that at the end, when this bill is enacted as law, uh, all those that are supposed to play their part in terms of the value chain, they have to do that. But nevertheless, I should think then we've agreed also in our program to say we'll have continuous uh, quarterly feedback meetings to make sure that all those issues that the communities have raised, they are followed up. And then the other issue, I think we need to also thank our parliamentary support staff. They've been amazing. As we close up in the Western Cape last weekend, we thank them to say it was not going to be possible without them supporting us. Now that we have had the communities, here we are. And the issues that, and the Mr. Smith as well, he has been very consistent attending all the public hearings. At some point, a, uh, the DDG, when she was available, she made sure that she attended some of the earlier hearings that we find very much also encouraging to get officials living their econ offices in Pretoria and Cape Town to be down with the communities because I think it assisted the migrate to also understand the plight of our people. So basically that's why we are here today to hear the department's responses on all the issues that the people have raised in relation to the bill so that it can then assist us a great deal as and when we progress to finalize the bill. Without saying so much, I want to thank everybody who has been part of this. It was not easy. Sometimes the long drives, especially for the colleagues, but uh, I continue to be inspired by the dedication commitment of all of you members and I think you understand why you are all here. It's service to our people, and you are so amazing. Uh, I want to thank you, colleagues. I thought I need to say this before we even start with this. And the support from the department, especially also the two PLOs, uh, your PLO deputy minister and also the PLO for the minister, where the other one could not be in, because I would always put them on the spot to say, these are the people representing the political offices. I hope they are noting, and I should believe some of the issues they could have already raised and shared them with you together with the minister. So we want to thank everybody who has been involved. Yeah, the, 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 the attendance was very good, but I think let me also single out these two members. It would be unfair for me if I don't do that. Uh, Honorable Gancho and Honorable Omdis, I don't think there's any public hearing that you missed. The others, yes, we understand sometimes we could have commitments, but all of you, you've been amazing. You've been attending uh, all these public hearings. So let me then hand over to the department to then lead us in terms of the presentation. Then we'll continue to interact with the presentation. Over to you, I think it's you, DDG, you know, Deputy Minister. Then you um, decide who leads the presentation. Over to you, DM. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson and um, Honorable Members. Um, Chair, I'm joined by the Acting DG, uh, Ms. Mashala, 
and also our DDG responsible for forestry management, uh, Ms. Pumez Anodara. I think you have said it all. I'm not going to repeat what you have said, uh, but uh, it's safe to say that um, indeed um, we went through the submissions and all the matters or most of the matters that were raised, we follow them up. And uh, as a result, then we are here with uh, the responses to, to most of those issues that has been raised um, by members of the community during your public hearings in most of the provinces. Indeed, Chairperson, you did um, uh, uh, had some discussions with myself with regard to some of uh, the pictures that you took and then uh, gave them to myself, where then I <coughs> share that uh, with uh, the department uh, through Ms. Enodara. And uh, that is receiving uh, attention from uh, the Eastern Cape uh, province. That is our director responsible for, for forestry management in the Eastern Cape. Uh, Ms. Gwen is working on that one and she is in touch with that community, especially the gentleman from Senko who raised those uh, issues that we think that they're very Hi, uh, I'm then going to hand over to the acting DG uh, Ms. Mashala, who then in turn will then maybe give over to our DDG, that is uh, Ms. Nodada. Indeed, Chairperson, you raised the issue of um, working together with a sister department, especially Dalrat. We are uh, working together with Dalrat and also with Cocta, because most of these um, forest matters and also the issues of the felt fires, they are, they are happening at the municipality level. Hence, we are working very close with COPTA with regard to this area of responsibility. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Comrade Chair. Can I then, um, I'm sorry for, 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 for Comrade, uh, Honorable Chair, can I then immediately hand over through you to our acting DG, Ms. Mashala. Thank you, Chair. You're missing the forums now, eh? Uh. <laughs> Good morning. DG. Good morning, DM, Honorable Chair, members, and um, colleagues. Um, as the DM has indicated, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come and provide responses on to the comments and issues that which were raised during the uh, public hearings. We will be talking to the responses on comments made on the bill itself, um, that is the National Field and Forest Fire Amendment Bill, as well as the general comments on the bill and the principle of the Act. And as well, we will also be talking to the responses um, in terms of the service delivery issues that which were made during the public hearings. I'm not going to waste time. I am joined by um, senior managers of the department, but specifically I'm going to then request DDG Pumezano Dada to take us through the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, at DG. Good morning to the Deputy Minister. Uh, good morning to the members, uh, Honourable Chair and Honourable Members, good morning to all of you. I'm just going to quickly share. Thank you. Okay. So as um, uh, indicated, uh, we are coming uh, this morning to provide uh, our feedback with regards to the issues that were raised uh, by the different stakeholders during the um, public hearings that were held by the portfolio committee. Um, so that would be the purpose of uh, our presentation. Uh, and this um, ran between the month of May up to the month of October um, in the nine provinces. So what we've tried to do is to just try and cluster the issues as much as possible. And as the acting DG has uh, indicated that we then classified those uh, responses into three. 
Uh, just a reminder from our side is the main uh, objectives uh, of the bill where uh, when we first came to the portfolio committee to present this amendment bill we indicated that we wanted to ensure that there is improvement in terms of the administration of the act and we wanted to deal with a number of uh, technical uh, enhancements which uh, included um, definitions uh, uh, that were already uh, in the bill uh, sorry in the in the principal act where we had noted um, that due to uh, the implementation process there was a need to amend some of those definitions also we wanted to have uh, alignment uh, with the legislation uh, especially the the constitutional framework but also to ensure that there the is responsiveness in terms of uh, combating um, the, the and prevention of the felt and uh, forest fires. So with regard uh, to the responses, I will start firstly with those that are directly um, giving input into the bill itself. And um, as I've indicated, we've tried to cluster them as much as possible um, because there were some repetitions in some, in some provinces and then in some provinces, there were those that were were, were, were were standalones, and we've tried to also capture those accordingly. So in terms of the first one, uh, in terms of clause one of the bill, the comment um, that came through, uh, specifically in the, first in, in the first state and the Northern Cape, was that... Um, there is a request that the community property associations be referenced as separately and be inserted uh, uh, in the in the bill. Um, so our response uh, to this is to say that uh, we viewed uh, the community forest community property associations as uh, landowners, and for that uh, the section two already um, defines what an owner is, and that includes a person or a lessee, who, uh, or, a lessee or a person who controls land in question uh, in terms of a contract, testamentary document, law, or a high order. So according to us, then these CPAs are already uh, included as part of the definition. Then on the next one, again, uh, in terms of clause one in Mpumalanga and Guazulu Natal, there was an issue uh, related to the fact that um, uh, fires in the open air in the act are not uh, permitted when a warning has been issued. And there are those um, instances where an open fire can be deemed uh, to include prescribed burning, where, uh, for instance, fire is used as a management tool. So what we are saying here is that um, the, this uh, definition must be read in context on, of Section 10, where the minister is able to publish uh, warnings when the fire danger is extreme or is rated uh, high. And uh, under, under these circumstances where there's normal land use uh, management practices that are required, such as making of fire bricks or banning of the fell fire as part of management tools, um, those are supposed to be the, the, the open fire banning should be uh, excluded, uh, should be discontinued. However, there is an, a, a clause that allows, or a provision that allows for exemption uh, within the bill. So we, are, we feel that this is, is already catered for in the, in, the, in, the, in the bill. And then again, in terms of uh, clause one, there was a, a comment that the word designated should be replaced uh, with uh, the, the word designed should be replaced with the word designated in terms of the definition of the fire open air. So what we are saying in this one is that uh, we are not supporting uh, um, this uh, proposal uh, because um, this definition must also be read in terms of section 10 of the act where the minister is able to publish the warnings. And then under those circumstances, when making the fire, um, the fire should only be allowed in those uh, designated uh, areas. And then again, under clause one, 
uh, in terms of the definitions of uh, the traditional uh, council. This was raised in Free State, Western Cape and Bozumi Natal, where um, the comment was that the act that we were referring to in the bill uh, needs to be replaced by the traditional and Khoisan Leadership Act of 2019. And we are in agreement um, with, with, with the proposal. And then on the next one, there was a, there's, in terms of clause two, there is a proposal uh, of in, in session that uh, where a, an FPA has been formed and uh, boundaries uh, of those FPAs are already there, there must be an inclusion uh, of those areas whereby, uh, for instance, there is an overlap uh, of, of boundaries. So we are saying here that uh, in terms of section four, four five of the, of the principal act, uh, only one FPA is registered per area. And um, there can only be one FPA per given area. And if, uh, just to also say that we've looked at this in the, in the context of where DFFE as a land user uh, is uh, prominent in the nine provinces, as an example, where we are able to then join the different fire protection associations in the different areas where we are able to, 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 to function, just to make sure that we have covered uh, all the land uh, parcels that we are responsible for. And then the next one uh, deals with um, the fact that uh, CPAs would want to form part of the FPAs and also there was a proposal that the FPAs uh, become a, a state-owned uh, entity or become a fire a rough fire authority. So in this one, um, we are saying that uh, in terms of the fact that CPAs are part of landowners and uh, the joining of the fire protection associations is open to all landowners, so they are covered in the act. But in terms of them uh, 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 allowing them to become a legal entity, uh, we are not uh, supporting this because um, uh, FPAs uh, are a voluntary uh, organization as prescribed by the Act, and they do not meet um, the criteria of, of ASO also is. Furthermore, in terms of the assistance by the municipalities where there was a request that uh, uh, communities should be assisted by, by municipalities in terms of uh, uh, creating, uh, in, in terms of establishing FPAs. Um, we are saying that, yes, um, this can, can happen where municipalities um, can assist in the formation of these FPAs um, as part of their responsibility. And we also are involved in that uh, process as well. Then in terms of clause three, where it says that uh, um, there is recognition that uh, the, the bill is compelling um, SOEs or organ states to be part of the fire protection associations. And the comment was that um, in terms of the offenses and penalties, should uh, that not be included in, can, in case there is no uh, compliance? And this should be included as part of um, Chapter 7 that deals with offenses and penalties uh, within the Act. Uh, our response uh, in this one is that uh, in terms of um, uh, the, the, the current uh, mechanisms that are there and the fact that um, uh, in terms of section 33 and 34 of the principal act, uh, it is uh, at the best interest of the state of organs to be part of FPAs uh, because it then allows them uh, to be protected uh, against a litigation should there be a fire. But at the same time, we are of the view that there is sufficient uh, mechanisms that can be used to make sure that uh, these um, these uh, state organs are accountable or are in compliant uh, with the Act. And then the next one uh, deals with uh, the amendment or uh, the comment where uh, there was a, a note that the 
low felt fire danger rating and methodology that is currently used by the South African Weather uh, Services uh, 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 looks at um, the, the indices between blue to red. But then in terms of the proposed uh, a bill, uh, in terms of 2A, there is reference to a high or extreme uh, um, uh, uh, indices. So the request was that there needs to be a coloration between the two to make sure that uh, there is uh, alignment. Uh, in terms of our response, we, we accept that, yes, there is a need for uh, consistency. And I think this comes at an opportune time because there is a review currently of the fire uh, danger uh, index that is currently being undertaken. And we will, uh, through our consultation with uh, the South African uh, Weather Services, ensure that uh, there is that alignment uh, to make sure that um, the, it's easy in terms of uh, compliance. <clears throat> and then in terms of the next uh, clo uh, uh, comment, which was on clause four, um, this one also, uh, okay, this one dealt with the fact that uh, the amendments do not deal with a, or do not cater for fire as a management tool, um, especially when the fire a danger rating is high in areas where maybe um, there's uh, 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 issues related to traditional uh, uh, purposes where and the request that maybe the traditional uh, leaders uh, should be exempted uh, from this provision. Um, our response to this is that um, the issues of land use uh, uh, management are supposed to be included in the FPA's uh, felt, man felt fire uh, management plans but also in terms of Section 10 of the Act, the minute, when the minister has published uh, the warnings, um, so, uh, uh, especially when the fire danger rating is high or, or, or extreme, uh, those normal uh, management uh, practices are not allowed. So it, it, it then means that a blanket proposal cannot be given um, uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, part uh, it is also noted that traditional leaders, should there be a need for such a request, they would then uh, have to apply through the FPA uh, in terms of, of getting uh, uh, the exemption. Uh, in terms of the next one, um, this one deals uh, with a section, sorry, with clause four where uh, there was a comment um, that uh, the reference should be uh, when an exemption is being requested. Uh, the current uh, um, uh, bill indicates that the minister must, before granting uh, the exemption, consult the Fire Protection Association of the area, if any, and the chief uh, fire office. So the comment here was that um, the reference should be made to the fire protection officer and not the chief fire officer uh, in line with a uh, section two section six to a of the uh, of the of the principal uh, uh, act where the chief fire officer is already the chief uh, protection officer especially if the municipality if there is a municipality there uh, we, we have uh, initially uh, supported uh, this proposal um, and uh, we also had a, a, a brief discussion with the parliamentary legal advisor on this and um, we, the, the view was that maybe we should, uh, instead of referring to the chief, to the fire protection office, uh, uh, fire protection association, refer to the individuals, which would be the chief fire officer and the chief protection officer. So this is something that we, we, we are consulting with uh, 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 legally as well, just to make sure that uh, it, there is um, a alignment. Then um, in terms of clause six, where there is an indication in the bill that uh, there would be a, a, a requirement that um, we would have a, a forest uh, officers or peace officers trained. Uh, the concern that was raised was that who will train these peace officers and these traditional leaders? This will the CPAs be involved, and also that um, 
the what about uh, the FPAs who want to, to enforce the act. So our response is that uh, currently the department is in a process and uh, of uh, appointing a new service provider for, for, for training. We already facilitate uh, the accredited uh, training to ensure that um, there is a uh, peace officers uh, uh, that are, are being trained. So um, as soon as there are people or, or, or who are uh, interested to become these peace officers, we are able to then collect uh, the names and take them through uh, that training. And also to say that uh, CPAs can, CPA membership, members can also be nominated to form part of the, the training should they wish uh, to do so. And also to also say that in terms of the act, uh, the FPAs appoint a fire protection officer who exercises uh, the rights uh, in terms of sections 27, 28 and 29, which deal uh, with uh, enforcement, but as long as these uh, people are trained. <clears throat> then uh, in terms of uh, the next uh, clause, which was clause eight, uh, there was an issue about uh, the cost that would be associated with the name change. Um, we are of the view that uh, this, this name change from Felt and Forest Fire Act for to Felt Fire uh, Act 1 is aligned to the definitions uh, where we tried to make sure that there is alignment and uh, making sure that the Felt Fire definition itself covers a number of landscapes. So we are of the opinion that uh, the, 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 the definition, the, the title was uh, supported and um, the costs in terms of uh, the name change will only, uh, will not be a lot as we, we, we have set aside funding in terms of making sure that the promotional material that we currently have will then be able to, to, to be changed uh, um, accordingly. And then in terms of the general uh, inputs, um, there was an issue about um, the role and uh, responsibility of FPAs and how these uh, FPAs are not uh, formed. The, the, the comment was based on the fact that um, the, 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 the act does not um, explain that uh, in detail. Uh, our response is that uh, the registration of the act is dealt with in, se in section four of the principal act and also section five also outlines what the, the duties uh, are. And then on the issue that municipalities and state owned uh, enterprises refuse, refuse to join uh, the FPAs, We've now uh, in this amendment ensured that the, the, the participation of these entities uh, is compulsory. Uh, and also there was a, a comment about that the FPAs are not inclusive and do not allow all uh, landowners to join. Uh, in terms of the principal act, uh, section 46, it does state that all landowners are supposed to be part of those uh, FPAs. And I, I think as part of our awareness um, uh, related work, we, 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 we had even in the, in the, in the public hearings uh, committed that it's something that we probably need to try and do more so that uh, should these uh, issues arise where FPAs are feeling that they are not allowed to, uh, sorry, uh, um, landowners are not allowed to join uh, FPAs, they can be dealt with uh, in, in those discussions um, at that level. And then uh, in terms of um, section seven, um, the comment here was that the majority of the FPAs cannot function as, as prescribed uh, in the act due, due to the lack of uh, resources, um, including uh, equipment and uh, also issues related uh, to, our, to awareness. And this uh, will, uh, if done, assist them in performing uh, their responsibilities in terms of prevention and the fighting of felt fires. Uh, we recognize uh, uh, as a department the importance of um, the role of the FPAs in, in their responsibility of the prevention and combating of uh, the felt fires and their need uh, for the support. 
as uh, we indicated uh, during the, the public hearings as well, that we are in a process of developing an FPA support strategy where we are addressing uh, these issues. And uh, a process is underway to ensure that the strategy is taken internally uh, for approval uh, so that uh, implementation can commence. Uh, on the next one, it's dealing with Section 9 of the Principal Act, where uh, the current, where there's a, there was a comment that the current uh, danger rating uh, ignores peculiar, peculiarities of the different uh, regions. So um, when uh, there was a comment that uh, FPAs to, are not able to to, to get uh, reliable or relevant information at their uh, local level. And the fact that um, although the fire danger rating is free uh, for a given uh, district municipality, um, they, they, they are required to subscribe for them to get a local based uh, uh, information for them to know what is the right rating uh, for that particular uh, uh, area on that particular day. Uh, we've noted this and we have also had some prelim preliminary discussions with the South African, uh, South African Weather Services and to also note that there is currently a review that is happening uh, of, on, on the index and I, as I've indicated in the slides uh, 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 earlier that uh, there would be then a, a need uh, for that uh, alignment and to see what uh, needs to be amended and what needs to be replaced such that the index is, is responsive to all the issues uh, that are being raised. Also to mention that with the FPA support uh, strategy, uh, we're also looking at uh, options uh, for support uh, through how do we then make sure that there is funding for these FPAs to, to, to be able to either um, get the materials or awareness, but also to, to look at these issues of being able to have access to the information that they require for them to be able to execute the work that they need to execute. And then um, the next, sorry. then the next uh, one deals with <clears throat> clause four that deals with the communication of um, the fire danger rating, where the comment was saying that um, should there, 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 there be consideration of the free-to-air television and two radio stations in the regions, and also in consideration of the fact or access of newspapers uh, to communities this uh, should be uh, discontinued. Um, there is a support uh, uh, in this regard um, from our side because there is recognition that uh, newspapers um, due to costs and uh, uh, the practicality of access of the newspapers, some new communities might not have uh, uh, access to this. We are aware that um, source is, is, is already trying a uh, 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 channels like social media to try and uh, issue um, these notices. Um, so, but that that it, it, then what we are also saying that this would mean that a uh, we there would be a, a need to look at whether there should be a new amendment that must be inserted, which would then uh, would need conse consequential amendments to sections to section ten one b and c. Uh, as in line uh, with this uh, uh, proposal. And then the next one um, refers to uh, section 12, uh, where there was a comment that um, in line with the duty by the FPAs to prepare uh, or landowners to prepare um, and maintain fire breaks, this can be expensive. And then there's also a, a request for, for government to try and support uh, these communities uh, to, 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 to create uh, uh, these fire breaks. Um, our response is that there is a, a recognition that the preparation and maintenance 
of the fire breaks is the responsibility of the of the landowner as a, a method to protect uh, uh, their uh, lovely loads. Uh, we will then, through our Working on Fire program, uh, engage uh, the FPAs regarding the preparation of these uh, fire breaks uh, prior to, to, to the fire seasons. And this also forms part of what we're looking at as part of the support package that we have uh, in, the, in the strategy. The next one was dealing with um, that um, there is a need for a technical uh, specifications for um, fire breaks in line with a uh, section 13 of the principal act. Um, this uh, we are not supporting due to the fact that um, there are many factors that need to be considered for a fire break to be to be to be created because these fire breaks uh, are, are in different terrains, are in, in different landscapes. So to have uh, the technical aspects, uh, it, it might also impede or a clash with the local conditions of that particular of that uh, a particular area. So it is usually best not to to, to prescribe that uh, in the act itself. And then in terms of the again on section uh, thirteen of the principal act. There was a request that uh, section 12 and 13 be amendment, sort of be amended to limit uh, the responsibility of preparing and maintaining uh, fire breaks in communities uh, in the municipalities instead of passing that responsibilities uh, to, to the uh, common age um, uh, users, especially that the municipalities have graders and they should be able to and uh, 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 do this uh, uh, service. So what we are saying here is that um, the, the the responsibility according to the act of maintaining uh, the, 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 the fire breaks is for uh, um, the, the landowner. And that is why we try and um, encourage, and now with this amendment bill where we are forcing the municipalities to join uh, these FPAs so that there can be that collaboration in terms of support and also in terms of bringing uh, uh, resources together um, for, for these uh, uh, communities to be able to prepare these uh, fire breaks. And then in terms of <clears throat> section 15, there, uh, where, which deals with the exemptions um, or from duty to prepare or maintain a uh, fire breaks, the proposal was that um, there must be a time frame that must be given to the minister where it says that uh, the, 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 the minister must within, must within 30 days uh, in, uh, uh, in writing grant or dismiss uh, with reasons um, 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 the application for an exemption and failure by the minister to do so with within that 30 days uh, constitute uh, uh, um, a sort of a, a, an agreement that uh, the, 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 the minister has agreed to such a, a, an application. Um, we are saying uh, this is not uh, supported because um, sometimes uh, when these uh, applications come through, um, depending on where they come from, there is always a need to go out and inspect uh, these areas and not in every uh, opportunity that we are able to go and inspect, everyone is available uh, for us to do the inspection. So to just uh, uh, give um, um, uh, that granting of, of, the, of, the, of the permission uh, might then be against one probably the, the management plan of that uh, FPA in terms of how they want to function uh, might be happening at a time uh, where um, there is really a need for those uh, fire breaks to be there due to the landscape uh, of the area, due to 
uh, maybe the area if it's it's rated as a high or, or a extreme uh, area in terms of uh, the the fire danger um, uh, 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 rating. So we would not want to just give um, that a uh, um, uh, uh, granting without giving that opportunity to go and do the inspections and to be sure that the work uh, that uh, we are approving as part of the exemption um, does not come back to affect uh, the other communities. And then uh, in terms of um, the next uh, item, which was a comment related to section 18.2, uh, which says that uh, a, a section 182 should be amended to enable an, an, an individual to act alone in ex, in extinguishing or preventing a fire from uh, from spreading instead of requiring um, another an, another person. So what we are saying here is that um, uh, this is currently not an amendment in the bill, but also the uh, the, the the act allows that if a person wants to take someone with uh, to come along when they want to extinguish or prevent such a fire uh, they may do so so it is not compelling uh, any person uh, uh, to to do that uh, as the the, the, card, the principal act is currently is and then in terms of the next one um it's relating to uh, the amendment of section 24 of the principal act uh, where um, there is uh, there are penalties where the, the the request was to amend such that the penalties there are penalties for deliberately or negligently starting a fire um the the comment behind this was that uh, the current penalties are not a deterrent uh, to the would-be arsonist, and um, therefore uh, these penalties, these penalties should uh, take into account uh, issues related to the loss of life or the loss of livelihood that get to be suffered by the by these fires. Um, so our view here is that um, arson, in its uh, essence, is dealt with under the criminal law and the criminal. Uh, procedures act and therefore um this um uh, uh, in our view should be enough to deal with that but also in terms of um the courts they are able to award a compensation in terms of the loss of or, or damages uh, in terms of uh, section 300 of the criminal procedures um act and then the next one um deals with the role of um, municipalities with um, regards to felt fires in that they are not uh, always uh, clear uh, and uh, sometimes uh, they are not uh, the municipalities uh, are not seen to be responding to um, the work that is their competency. So our response here is related to um, the constitution where it places um, firefighting and uh, the firefighting services as a function of uh, local municipalities uh, where the a fire a fire uh, a service for the area of jurisdiction of of the municipality is established as contemplated in section 31 of the fire brigade services act uh, and also if that is read with section 156.1 of um, the constitution. So in terms of um, the municipal structures uh, act, uh, the strict municipalities are responsible for firefighting uh, services uh, in terms of the planning coordination and regulation of the fire services um, uh, activities. Also to ensure that there is a specialized firefighting uh, services also in terms of the coordination of standardization of the bylaws um, and also in terms of the training uh, of these uh, fire officers. Um, but also to say that we then uh, through our work with the, um, the National Disaster Management Center, 
um, work uh, together to try and make sure that there, there, there is that uh, support and a consultation also with COCTA on the support that municipalities may need or in terms of the responsibilities that they, they, they should be they should be doing in terms of their firefighting um, services. Then there were a couple of comments with regards to the role of the of working on fire in terms of the of the act. Uh, what we are saying here is that the working on fire program is a government um, a, a, a program for uh, a job uh, a creation, uh, mainly um, uh, focusing on integrated uh, fire management in South Africa. Uh, the firefighters are recruited from marginalized uh, communities and are trained in fire awareness, um, uh, in education and prevention and fire um, management uh, skills. And uh, they become uh, these uh, firefighters that are stationed at uh, different uh, areas uh, within the country to assist uh, or to try and uh, uh, help stop um, the, the, the sketch of uh, wild uh, fires. These uh, working on fire firefighters are called in to assist uh, at uh, management at the with to assist with the management of local and international uh, fell fires in cooperation with authorities and uh, the FPAs. And um, they also assist uh, in, in attending to these fires, even though they are not necessarily a fire service uh, as defined by the Fire Brigade Services Act. And um, so th that is how um, they um, are functioning. And then I think in the next slide, there was a follow up with regards to um, that uh, these workers should have permanent uh, em em employment as opposed to these short term contracts. And also that a uh, youth must be uh, prioritized uh, in, the, in this uh, program. And also um, that uh, there must also be a consideration with regards to um, alignment of both our, of this act, the National Felt and Forest Fire Act, and the Fire Brigade Services Act in terms of um, the implementation, because sometimes you will find that there was an open fire that was started, uh, which then maybe was um, a, a considered within the National Felt and Forest Fire Act, but then it escalates and then it, it leads to another form of fire where the Fire Brigade Services Act would uh, uh, need uh, to, to come in. So those are the issues that would need to be considered. Uh, in addition to this, there was the issue about the charges uh, that the communities end up to be uh, charged uh, for, for the service. Um, our response uh, uh, in this is that uh, the, the Working on Fire program uh, is an extended uh, public works program and therefore is um, uh, does not offer the permanent positions because of the nature of how the program is structured and it does consider youth. Uh, I think at this stage there's over 50% of the recruits that are, are, are youth uh, participants. And the comment with regards to the alignment uh, is taken into consideration. And we are currently, currently uh, consulting COCTA on it because they are in a process of uh, amending their Fire Brigade um, uh, Services Act just to make sure that uh, these issues are, are, um, are considered and there is that uh, alignment. They have had their inputs to this bill, so they are aware of what we have as part of our bill in terms of, um, in terms of that support. And then also, um, we are also saying that um, in terms of the new tender that is uh, currently being finalized, we are looking at um, a, a, this issue of payment uh, by the communities, and um, in the in the, that is one of the uh, areas where we, we are saying through the new tender, this uh, will, will will be looked um, uh, into without going into detail uh, into that tender. And then in terms of in terms of the next one that deals with issues related to awareness, 
Um, there, there was a comment that there's general lack of awareness um, on um, forest and felt fires by the communities and the departments needs to do more. We have noted uh, uh, this and we're taking this into consideration. We've also noted that there are a number of uh, entities that are involved in, 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 in the awareness and there is a need for a better coordination. So as a department, we are going to uh, make sure that we um, reevaluate and uh, these various programs so that um, they, they are brought together and there is uh, effect, effectiveness uh, in terms of the work that is being done. And then the next one was dealing with um, the request by communities to be provided with basic uh, uh, um, firefighting uh, equipment so that they are able to, 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 to deal with or protect themselves against uh, fires as most of them do not have uh, the funds. Uh, this is being considered in the strategy that uh, uh, the department uh, is, is is developing and uh, will be uh, uh, expect the the, ex the the approval is is going to be expedited so that we can then uh, start with the implementation of of this, um, of this uh, strategy. And then there was also an issue about uh, the rangers that used to be appointed, and there was a request that. Uh, this needs to be uh, uh, reinstated. Uh, we have noted uh, that uh, recommendation and uh, there the, the would need to be discussion with the different uh, uh, organs of state, uh, bearing in mind the capacity or financial uh, constraints and see how this can be addressed to, to make sure that uh, um, the rangers are brought back or uh, through those discussions, we can see how best uh, this matter can be addressed. Then the next one dealt <clears throat> with issues related to capacity, uh, where there was a request that um, given the new responsibilities of the role players, including the traditional leaders and municipalities, there must be a training. We've, we are, we've considered that and uh, the department is, is providing the training. We are also considering uh, developing a, a, a guideline document uh, that can then also be, also be, or be used as well as part of that uh, uh, training process. And that can also be given to the, the role players to use as part of, of their daily uh, uh, responsibilities. In terms of the appeals, uh, there was a comment that uh, the bill makes provision for the appeals, but there is no uh, procedure. Um, the department's uh, response is this, uh, that we will, uh, as soon as the, 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 the process of this uh, bill is finalized, start with the development of those uh, regulations. And then I think uh, in terms of these general comments, the last one, it was dealing with the National Forest Advisory Council, where there was a comment that there was no due process followed uh, in terms of the um, in terms of the appointment of the new of the new council. Um, we are we've noted this, but uh, the the department's response is that the due process was followed uh, according to the National Forest Act. And um, these have now been approved by the, the minister. The, 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 the current uh, um, council is in operation and um, all the areas as outlined, uh, I think there's about eight areas that the, 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 the National Forest Act outlines that must be considered as part of the people that must serve in this council. All those areas were, 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 were looked into and there is representation that uh, fits into those, including uh, those that are, 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 are dealing or have experience in terms of um, uh, forest research. Uh, then, uh, Chair, I think uh, the last one was on the service delivery issues, which is uh, which are those that we are not going uh, into detail on. Um, there were a number of these that were raised 
in the in the public uh, um, uh, hearings. Uh, we've just tried to outline a few here, which range uh, from um, um, lack of water um, support uh, for communities uh, in terms of uh, compensation, uh, issues related to extension services for agriculture, issues related to dumping sites, and issues related to employment. So um, our response here is that uh, we we based on on the on the on the on the meetings that were held the 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 authorities there were given some time to to respond back directly to the portfolio committee on those issues and um, some of the issues we are following up on especially those that uh, are related to cocta to agriculture um and uh, as to so and to source as well as i have indicated and uh, so um, those that were not in attendance were also um, advised of the issues uh, uh, that were raised. So we have not dealt uh, with this in detail because it then depends on each of the different uh, uh, role players, how they want to respond to the service uh, uh, delivery um, related matters that affect them. And then in, in conclusion, uh, Honorable Chair, just to say that um, the inputs that were received by the public consultations were uh, valuable um, uh, uh, for us as a department as well, uh, because um, it made us to also uh, see some of the areas that we need to strengthen in terms of the administration of the Act and to ensure that the purpose of the Act is, is achieved. Uh, also to make sure that um, the, the, there's the role of uh, traditional uh, leadership in terms of fire and fire uh, management is, is recognized and it was also a welcome. And the fact that the, there was support uh, for, for the bill. And also to say that this uh, um, uh, exercise has also assisted us in terms of uh, to strengthening our a collaboration with our sister departments uh, to just make sure that we we we, we are all on the same page uh, in terms of issues and as i've indicated we've already identified areas of awareness that would need to strengthen uh, etc so thank you very much uh, chairperson for the opportunity Thank you so much, uh, DDG No Dada, for the comprehensive feedback and report back. Can I then ask the colleagues who want to talk to the presentation and feedback? Can I see hands? Thank you. Uh, I'll start with um, Honorable Phillips. It's going to be followed by Honorable Weber. Honor Welcome, Honorable Brian. I tendered your apology that you're going to join at 10. Thank you. Thank you, you. Chair. It will be you, then followed by uh, Honorable Mpuno in that order. Over to you, Honorable Weber. Sorry, it's Honorable Phillips, Chair. <laughs> My apologies. Honorable. No problem. Uh, thank yes. you so much. Um, I'd, I'd like to also thank everybody for all the input and all the hard work that went into these oversight visits and for my colleagues for standing in for me when I couldn't always be there. Um, uh, the, the one I think we need to emphasize really, really well is a slide on, on slide 29 um, where the communities need to be equipped. I think that came through over in almost every single um, hearing that we heard. And um, we cannot expect people to fight fire if they don't have firefighting equipment. So I think that's really got to be addressed and um, we, we need to make sure that the people are equipped and empowered to be able to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Phillips. Honorable Weber. 
morning, everyone. Um, again, thank you very much for this. I agree you put it well together. And um, I just have a couple of concerns. Um, the, the, the link between us now bringing the municipalities in and their responsibilities. Um, I don't know how we're going as DFF to monitor the municipalities um, if the, this is a responsibility, and I understand it is in the constitution, but um, I am from Malanga and there's one or two towns, one is, is uh, Pixley Kaseme, where they don't have a fire brigade. And the, the district is sitting in Ermelo, which is about 200 kilometers from there. So I understand this, but the execution of, of this bill linking it to municipalities and the FBAs. I, I hope I'm clear of what I'm struggling to understand there. <clears throat> um, there was one issue that really came up from especially our uh, um, farmers that don't have money, our farmers that were given land and is trying to farm um, it came through that they all want to assist, they all want to be part of the FBAs, but there's registration fees and they cannot adhere to that. I'm not sure if this is something that's supposed to be in the bill or in the, the strategy of the FBA, but some way we need to assist and help these farmers of equally fairly being part of an FBA so that they can also be protected. I remember specifically the one person talk about they received this land, they're trying to farm on it and they have a struggle with land invaders and they start fires. And, and there need to be a protection to our farmers that really wants to farm and really wants to make a living. And I'm not sure how we're going to do this, but there need to be some way in our laws making place for the, uh, 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 if I can say the poor people that really wants to work and earn money, don't have all the resources in a way for them to be protected as well. I don't expect to be just everything free, but there needs to be a protection because if their farms burns down, there is nothing for them at all. Um, Chair, then on, 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 on um, the fire breaks, I really would like to, 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 to want the department to really think about if they don't want to put it in the ad, but the people spoke to us and we just said awareness is not well done and they really have asked regarding fire breaks. They don't have the knowledge to, to give them the, the, uh, uh, a guideline on when, where the fire breaks, how it works, and it is on slide, I think, 21, section 13. And I do want us to reconsider this because when something like this, it's a guideline or we call it the norms or whatever, this helps people to understand. I mean, it's difficult to go and look for things like this if it's anywhere else but in the act. I do believe that we need to put um, a, a document together that assists people in, in under what conditions, what fire breaks, where and what. I do believe that will be extremely helpful to the community that really made it clear that they actually don't have that knowledge. And the only place where they're going to get that is, is from the Act. Um, Okay, I have asked about how uh, municipalities will actually be monitored in ensuring this, that the, uh, they are involved in this. Uh, Chair, the other problem we have, I don't know where this is, is, is actually being addressed and if this is the wrong uh, bill, but um, municipalities that does have proper fire brigades, I mean, sometimes this fire brigade has to travel 150 to 200 kilometers to get to a place where there is a fire. By the time they get there, the fire probably would be dealt with by, by local people. Um, so we, we need to look at that on other resources or other ways that we can deal with this and maybe give some suggestions regarding that. Um, 
I do think we need to consider the regions. I know you say you're considering it, but I do believe this should be in the act. So uh, I don't think we need to wait. Uh, we need to discuss it. In your slide, you say um, the, the ranges, it actually, when they, they, it, they will be a lot less south fires. And the reason why we're not considering the ranges is due to financial constraints. But if the ranges are there, and there's a lot less fire, I do think that financial constraints will not be there because there will not be fire and money won't go into that. So I do think we need to, to seriously look into the ranges. It is also job creation, although it's not EPWB. Uh, in slide 30, you spoke about the training guideline document, and I actually believe that is an excellent one. And um, if we do not put the, 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 the fire breaks into the act, I do think we need to have a, 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 a once off document where e everything, our awareness, what we want people to be aware of, training, everything, the guidelines to be in this document, and it should go hand in hand with the act going out. Then your last slide, um, ma'am, it was very interesting. And um, one of the things is people were talking about water, water for themselves, but also water for uh, uh, um, fires. Now that is something I, I, I think not water as a resource for the people, but for fires, we do need to think of that. Um, I know in Northwest and Malanga, there's very, drought areas where there's no water. So when a felt fire starts, there's no water. So I do think that is something that we really need to consider in an area where there is farms, where there is possibility of, of felt fires and there's no water. We do need to come up with a plan. And I do think that plan needs to come from us. And um, other thing uh, on that slide, I just quickly looked at the Relativity of DFFE being involved. Now, uh, illegal dumping is is also our thing. Waste is our thing. And although the municipality is responsible for it, um, a lot of fire starts with people being tired at uh, uh, um, illegal dumping and they set things fire or municipality not uh, fetching the waste and they set it alight because if you were there where we were yesterday, I understand why people sometimes start setting things a lot, uh, a lot because you just can't deal with the smell and everything anymore. And that can actually start a big felt fire. So I do think those two items needs to come back in. We have to look at illegal dumping and and waste where people set it alight, which is illegal. But I do think we need to address it in the act and what the consequences will be of it and what the proper structures of that, although it is a municipal function, even if we just say it has to be dealt with by the municipality. Um, those two things on the last, last slide, I think is important to include into the act because having no water to kill a fire is a problem and illegal dumping is a problem where if you have a glass and, and lately in Pumalanga, it's between 35 and the now spread 40 degrees and there's a glass in a in in felt lying because of illegal dumping, that glass most probably will see the, the, the dry grass alight and then you have a fire and this will be in residential areas. So that is something that we need to look at. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Weber, for that marathon uh, well thought input. Then I'll allow Honorable Mpunu to raise the issues. Thank you, Honorable Chair, and greetings to uh, colleagues and um, uh, the team, the Deputy Minister and uh, the staff. My, my question is on um, where we, where the, the, on the role of uh, the municipalities. Uh, I, I, I agree with the response from the department that uh, uh, we have that uh, we, the, the, in terms of the law, the structure act, the district's uh, function is uh, uh, the, the, for the issue of, of fighting fire is in the uh, at a district level. Um, but uh, my my question is, if we we are going to to say that 
we're going to do it um, to to read it in conjunction with the with the structures act uh, are we not going to include uh, that part in the bill that, uh, that 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 we are specific that uh, those uh, municipalities that have uh, that role of being um, uh, or, or, or that, 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 that are given that role as um, as uh, uh, of, of, of dealing with fire in their municipalities be inserted specifically in the bill so that we we don't we don't uh, a thumb suck when we when we when we say who should be responsible for for this uh, particular uh, um, fire fell fires the other thing uh, uh, honorable chair also on that one is um, when we talk about um, um, the area i know that the area we, that or in other words that will also assist us in defining the area as it is said that uh, 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 the municipal area, which which talks to the municipal boundaries because when you talk uh, if you say area i think the the word area is wide but if you talk about the municipal boundaries it will assist us that we establish the fpas according to the municipal boundaries so that um, when the boundaries change we are covered uh, uh, as per the the, the demarcation uh, uh, act which uh, which changes mainly after a uh, uh, Yes, I'm trying to look for this. For the there is another slide, uh, honourable chair, where it if, where it talks to the uh, uh, this the land owned by the state, the state land, and uh, uh, yeah, but it, it 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 refers to that. But my question on that one, if we just say uh, yes. Um, uh, there is a legislation or there is a, an act that deals with that with that one what are we why can't we insert it also in the bill uh, as as per as it was uh, um, as, as it was being raised in the community meetings that we must they must be held responsible uh, i was trying to go through also chair on the issue i remember that there was an issue of penalties that was raised that we should be specific on the penalties that that we are going to uh, 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 that are go that, that are going to be imposed on whoever is uh, defaulting uh, on on the bill, so that we know when the peace officers or the police uh, police uh, are, 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 are discharging their work that this is the penalty that they will be imposing if if it's taken to court. This is the penalty that would be imposed on that, irregardless of whether it's a state-owned land or whoever is owning the land. Everybody must be treated in, on that equal level. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Kun. Honorable Bryant will be followed by Honorable Dise then it will be Honorable Paulson in that order. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, it helps sometimes going after um, my uh, very learned colleagues um, who made, I think, all of the points that I was going to make already. Uh, so I'm not going to waste anybody's time and repeat anything, I, I, but I do agree that all of the points that have been made have been well made. Um, and, and should be borne in, into consideration. You know, I think one of the central themes that I found from the public hearings that I attended that came through very strongly was uh, the genuine concerns that so many people in rural areas or in areas that don't have access to the same facilities as the major metros, the concerns that they have um, that relate mainly to basic infrastructure not having a fire engine that can get there on time, not having enough fire hydrants to assist when these, these felt fires spread um, from the open felts uh, into residential areas, um, a, a general lack of expertise and manpower when it comes to, to firefighting services, um, and just a general feeling from so many people that they have been left behind when it comes to issues relating to fighting fires. Um, 
and so many uh, communities who rely now on the assistance and the benevolence of uh, local farmers and um, community groups and the FPAs um, who really are in many ways filling the gap um, that uh, is is uh, uh, is sitting um, gaping uh, that's been left behind um, by, by by you know failures within infrastructure. So that that's something which really which really hit home um, and, and and came through very strongly. I do think that there is still uh, a general um, and and quite valid concerns around the registration of the FPAs and how one ensures that that is done in a way that uh, includes everybody and doesn't prejudice any of the organizations, um, but at the same time ensuring that um, the uh, 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 groupings that need to be uh, registered are are correctly done so. Um, I think a lot of the other points have been have been covered by my colleagues. Um, I would say in general that um, the comments that have been captured uh, for for Free State, for uh, Western Cape, for the Eastern Cape um, are an accurate reflection uh, from my perspective. Um, and uh, I would like to thank yourself, Chairperson, and all of the officials um, who accompanied us uh, during these visits. Um, for their diligence and um, hard work. Thank you. Elsa. Honorable Modise. Chairperson, good morning to yourself, the Deputy Minister and uh, Honorable Members. Um, I, I, I really have went through the, the summarized version of the of the, the the of what has been captured from the consultations on the National Field and Forest Fire Amendment Bill, um, uh, except what is written here, Chair. I perhaps perhaps from 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 from, from my recollection would want to raise a number of issues that arose. Uh, very strong from uh, a variety of other provinces. Uh, um, I think Honorable Kunu spoke uh, about the, the penalties of fines. Um, that, that point came up very strong. Uh, for instance, we spoke about uh, uh, some TV movies who smoke up, who smokes while driving, throws a cigarette butt. Um, um, next to the road, and that that starts a a a a failed fire. Uh, I do I do not see that, or I have not heard the uh, DDG respond uh, uh, to to what what constitute a fine, or what kind of fine will then be uh, given uh, to that uh, to be this a uh, uh, person uh, or a penalty. Uh, so I think the the act must be clear uh, in terms of of, of that that particular uh, offence. Um, so so that when you get to a police station to report an offence of that nature, uh, you know uh, even the peace uh, police officers know exactly what to register uh, as a, a a crime. So if it's not clearly stipulated or defined in the act. Uh, we might find ourselves in a in in a in, in a, uh, a quagmire. So so I'm 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 keen to 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 get what what would be the interest the, the response of the department uh, on that. But um, also oh, my recollection speaks uh, re reminds me rather of the the decentralization of the 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 firefighting fire brigades. Uh, in most, almost all uh, provinces that we went to, um, there was a similar concern that uh, uh, fire, fire, fire brigades are all based in one uh, district municipality, and more often than not, they take more than two to three hours to respond to a call to extinguish a, a felt fire. 
um, 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 and perhaps is it not would it not be advisable uh, that an act must uh, uh, promulgate that um, each municipality must have its own fire brigade uh, so that uh, it's able to respond uh, uh, to the fell fire within its area of operation and, and jurisdiction because this this came across very strong um, you would agree that all the public hearings that we have had, uh, we 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 concentrated uh, um, uh, about three or four municipalities in a particular district, and all of them were saying that uh, their concern is that uh, these brigades are based at the district level, and 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 that municipalities. It happens at times that one uh, felt fire is happening. Uh, in one municipality uh, um, or two municipalities concurrently, and um, uh, the district is unable to respond to, to, to these felt fires. Uh, I did not really get a response to that effect, but um, I'm, 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 if I was to advise, uh, despite the fact that we have financial constraints, constraints and shortcomings, um, perhaps if we if we make them act. And will then the department will then have to devise means with all other stakeholders to ensure that municipalities have a, a necessary capacity uh, to respond uh, to, to to these felt fires. Um, um, the, the, we also came across a an issue that relates to uh, cross border and uh, provincial cut across fires. Uh, um, this came across in areas like uh, Limpopo, northwest, northwest in the main, um, Bumalanga, um, where where these municipalities are, where these felt fires are cross cutting. Uh, for instance, there in in the northwest, we were told that felt fires may begin in in Botswana and come to South Africa. So I, I did not get the response of the department uh, to that effect in so far as how do they intend to uh, regulate or rather uh, make the law uh, that that, uh, that responds to, to, to this uh, cross-border and provincial uh, cut across uh, uh, fires. Um, I, I see the department has also noted the issue of uh, fire rangers. I think many provinces have raised this matter, that in the past they used to have uh, fire rangers um, and uh, in most of these provinces, the recommendation was that uh, it should be compulsory uh, for municipalities or whichever uh, sphere of government to employ firefighters, um, not only as a response to uh, job creation, uh, but as an institution to prevent felt fires, um, uh, not only relying on working on fire and uh, limited capacity that we have in district municipalities um, and, uh, uh, and and few other people who take in interest in preventing uh, these felt fires, your traditional leaders um, and your your traditional healers, etc. etc. So 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 I, I'm not getting a response on uh, uh, what do we do about the recommendation uh, that there should be uh, uh, people who are employed to prevent uh, 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 these fires as and as in when they they they, they okay. Lastly, uh, honourable chair, the the issue of uh, uh, the the formation of FPAs um, uh, e, 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 as per recommendation that we made uh, to to in our public hearings, uh, I do not get the, the view of the department. Um, whether we we leave it uh, as uh, as as an option, or we make it an obligation um, for 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 um, these institutions and other stakeholders to take to 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 be to be, for them to be com for it to be compulsory uh, for them to form a, a, a fire protection uh, associations. I. I see the department is um, um, fundamentally uh, um, objecting to the the, the, the CPAs forming uh, FPAs. 
um, I, I do not get the sense um, 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 as to why, because um, it would be of interest to all of us that uh, we should rather have as many people as possible uh, who are who are felt uh, uh, who are felt firefighters, um, so that we, we we try as much as possible to distinguish uh, to to extinguish these fires uh, before they they really. And degrade our, our our biodiversity and, and and our forestry. So so I'm I'm keen to to get the the views of the department on 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 this and, and of course many other uh, 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 issues. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, honourable Mudise, honourable person. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair, um, uh, I think I think we we got valuable input from from communities across the country at all these public hearings, and they've raised some serious issues. And I agree with the department that a CPA shouldn't be able to just form a FBA. Chairperson, for the simple reason, the CPAs are usually people that had massive resources at their disposal. And it is usually their properties that were at threat. And people were then volunteering to the CPAs, uh, you know, who had the resources, the, the trucks to go out and extinguish fires. Although they've done a wonderful job, I still think we, should, we shouldn't allow CPAs just to form FPAs and then um, become a, a sort of entity that can um, hold organizations and, and, and municipalities to ransom in terms of demanding payment for the work that they do. I suggest that CPAs then go and join legitimate FBAs um, to, to, to be able to counter uh, the Falton forest fires Chairperson, the other thing that the, the Act is very silent on is in terms of once an area has been ravaged and although we're going to try and prevent the spread of fires to the extent that it destroys too much of the vegetation, who's responsible for, for public land that has been ravaged by fires in terms of its rehabilitation? That is one issue. And I also think the other matters that are, are being covered, the issues raised by the public, we hear the responses here, which we appreciate, but how does that public get to know, especially as far as the National Forestry Council is concerned, because there was a very valid issue where people say that they were members of the former advisory council and suddenly the, the the term came to an end and a new council appointed and that was it you know i think we need to kind of show more appreciation for people who sorry chairperson no, I'm waiting for you. You're still saying feedback, and then you got stuck. What's interfering no. with you? As as no, chairperson. My apologies. My 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 um, internet connection <laughs> uh, stopped there, and I just had to make sure that it's reconnected. Chairperson. So I think in terms of the um, National Forestry Advisory Council, where where there were valid issues raised, that uh, when the term came to an end. They were just replaced, and that's it. And um, I think we we need to appreciate the work that those people do, and the former council, and it, um, you know, um, do a proper sort of termination rather than just abruptly telling people you are no longer a member of the council. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, dear colleagues. Then, yeah, on my side, uh, DPT minister as well. <laughs> there were times where... Can you hear me? Who's calling Chair, 
church oh, country. Okay. I'm sorry, maybe you did not you see my name. Yes, 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 church. It was not there. I thought it's an oh. after. Proceed. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I'm sorry, Chair. I won't be able to to open my video. I am not in the right state. I will talk to you later, Chair. Um, I have seen the, the 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 summary of the report, and and they have um, covered almost everything that was raised uh, in the communities, and also my colleagues have. Um, also raised uh, some of the things, in fact, all of the things that I also wanted to, to raise. Uh, Chair, there's one thing that I think I uh, shouldn't, I don't see it or reflecting on the report or one thing that came up um, through almost all the, 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 the provinces, the issue of initiation schools. Um, the, the reason why I'm raising this last week on the news after we have um, visited Western Cape, I saw community of Stellenbosch, they were up in arms fighting with the municipality, that it just stopped them from um, exercising that, right? They were just stopped, they received a memo saying there won't be any initiation that will be taking place in an area, so and so, and there was no alternative for them that was given. So I think also it, it came up very strongly, we should note it and not be seen as government who is ignorant of the traditional or, or of the tradition and the culture of, of our people. That's what I wanted to do to raise the, the issue of education schools, at least it, it should reflect somewhere. Thank you. Mm, I was still raising one issue, Deputy Minister but also uh, with regard to the cross-referencing of the relevant legislations. Uh, Mr. Smith, you will recall, I think it was in the first state, as well as uh, in the Western Cape and Limpopo, where in, in the actual bill, I had to defend that she's still referring to the Traditional Leadership Framework Act. Whereas now there's the traditional uh, and coincidental leadership at the TKLA. That's the issue that we need to rework on that to say we need to cross reference the relevant legislation. That also deal with the issue that Honorable Mkuno was raising. There's nothing that bars us from referencing the section of the act so that when you, of the other act, like the local government act, then we have to do that to cross-reference and also do that so that you say it will be read in line with section 20 of the Municipal Structures Act or whatever act you call it, then that's doable and it makes the law to be easier and user-friendly. But then that's the issue that one, one, one wanted to raise in relation to that issue of the TKLA and the framework and that we need to seriously because that's the one of the major amendments we've been dealing with that but i think it's up to the drafters that will assist us to make sure that is then cross-reference that's the issue that one wanted to to raise uh, sharply on this other issue and then i should think a uh, dg and then um, ddg you also need them to also share with us with regard to the costing of the bill, but I know normally post this, once the bill is enacted, then you need to come and uh, talk to us on that one, also on the costing, because as it is now, we are placing a lot of responsibility to the municipalities. And then without the proper funding, then this bill won't be implemented. So these are some of the issues that we need to then talk to it to say, maybe to talk to us on the, how are you going to make sure then, then once you're saying the municipality must do, but you know that is done through COCTA in terms of the allocation. 
that can be attended to. But once it's legislated, the Treasury needs to know. But I think then the department will have to champion this so that at the end of the day, resources become available. Because generally, Deputy Minister, there have been people who have been saying, we wish this act gets implicated, this amendment gets implemented as early as today. But you know the processes that we have to deal with that. And then the other issue, for us to finalize this a, 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 a DDG note order, we need a detailed response from the department because uh, what is presented here is just few issues that you picked up and then left out the rest. I think the reason why this entry were there with Zivani and others. Their purpose will, will just to they pick up the things and it would be very key if you are not so sure which items you didn't address, then liars with the secretary team, they will be able to pick you up because I think for us to, to deliberate this, we need to, uh, to get a detailed response from yourself uh, 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 because there are issues that you didn't cover at all that still need that repose. It will be then okay to then check with the secretariat and then maybe we can again in between now and us deliberating on this impulse have a second round of a meeting where in everything that and then I think the, the the research team including the secretariat team must be able to then single out which other issues that were raised by the communities that were not even in uh, 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 responded to. I think that can be done on our part so that we are specific to say, respond to this, do this. But generally, you've just touched some of the issues and the others remain not responded to DG. I think the team that has been traveling with us, they need to go back to their notes, province by province, then put the other issues that has been outstanding. So that's the issue that I felt I need to Simply raise it here, and I should think Honorable Mudise was also trying to, 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 to say it on the chat box to say, uh, the responses that you have responded to here, you just did a hand pick of few others. So this is the other issue. Then that will also assist us moving forward. Then to say. If you can go back as and when you respond to say those ones that are outstanding, that are very critical, that need to be responded to, because we are doing that because at the end we need to deliver it. Then we're going to go a uh, section by section, say this, but this is only done when announced by your comprehensive response to the issues as raised a uh, DDG Luda and team. So let the team assist you. We had a lot of them in most of the hearings. They can assist you to also. Then if you know social, there's nothing that's wrong with you checking with the research team from parliament, including the secretary, the Michelega and others. Then they will be able to give you that feedback because at some point maybe the officials got overwhelmed so that they left out critical items. But the other issue I suspect because um, there were times when in we were in those meetings and we asked Mr. Smith and yourself, DDG, sometime you did that in case of time, to give, give feedback. The other issue could have been that because you responded in the meeting, then there was no need for you to bring them back here. But for the purpose of the record, because that's how it's done in terms of the legislative process. Those issues, you could have cleaned them up again. So those are some of the issues that one wanted to raise. Over to you, DDG, DG, and Tim. Honorable Singh, before that, I, Honorable Singh, I, your hand is up. Can uh, I say with yes, consent? Sir. Before that, yes, sir. Before that, Honorable Singh, Paulson, is it an historical end, and uh, Phillips, is it a or historical hand, or you, raise, you want to raise some more issues? No, sorry, Chair, historical hand. Okay, person is dropped this. Over to you, Honorable Singh. Yes, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, <clears throat> I, I just cannot but uh, emphasize what you said last about uh, funding. Because, you know, in our many years, and you in the executive, we always know that when there's legislation, 
funds must follow functions. And I think national governments and other levels of governments are far too quick to pass on responsibilities to lower levels of government without ensuring or assuring that those those levels have the uh, uh, required funding because implementation will take place at that particular level. So, uh, and then on every bill that I know of, one of the requirements in any bill, and even when it's sent to cabinet, and I don't know if it was done when this bill was sent to cabinet, there is a clause of financial implications. I think you are aware of that uh, uh, as an ex-minister. And these are the things that I just want to emphasize, uh, you know, that you said that I think the department needs to include as we move forward. Thank you. Definitely, uh, Honorable Senesa, when they come, once the bill is in, enacted, they need to come and brief the committee on their state of readiness of the implementation of the bill, including the um, financing part of the bill. And then it's their responsibility to make sure that whatever allocation is done, then uh, if they're going to do it in a grant funding as a department, whatever, when they motivate for their budget treasury, they need to make sure that there's such a, a, a resources. Because without that, because generally what was raised, Deputy Minister, is the issue of recruitment resources. Uh, I'll give you a classical example. Uh, where I'm staying, there is this so-called super quick uh, tire that that bent is just across opposite the fire brigade, but then the that super quick bent down to ashes. It took them I don't know how many. They are just across the street. You can see how unresourced and the issue to capacitate local government. It's I think it's honourable who will raise it sharply to say, because also the communities raise the issue of training honourable sin sharply so to say. We want to be trained, and with that, you need the resources to do that. Otherwise, as ourselves as legislatures will have also failed our people just pass legislation for the sake of passing it because without the requisite resources, nothing is going to happen. But I should think we are all in agreement. This is a valid point that you are raising. Once this gets enacted into law, the department must come back to the committee with a clear implementation plan that has got also resources attached to it. And Chair, just thank you very much. I, I don't know if we have raised the issue of the, the, the staff with the working for fire, because I remember where I was, you know, the guy said they can't even move. If there's a fire, they have to stand back and watch when they are trained, uh, but they can't move in because of the, uh, the conditions of employment. So that's something that I think might have been raised by others and we need to look into that. Thank you. It was not raised, you are raising it, we are glad that you are also reminding us of that, Honorable C. Is there any other issue you want to raise as well? I'm sorry I might have interjected you. Uh, no, 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 I, I'm fine with that. But uh, I think you recall where that uh, the youngster said, well, we know what to do. And we see a fire right across the road from where we are, but we can't go in there because our bosses tell us if we get injured or something like that, there's no uh, IOD. Uh, so there has to be some kind of an arrangement. If we've got skilled people who have been trained in an area that can go and put a fire, you don't wait for all these things. If there's a fire, you go and try and put it out. And I think these people, we, we've got to find out how, what way between working for fire and this bill, there can be some kind of a, a relationship so those officials can intervene when there is a fire, especially in a in a crawl or in, in a rural area where you, by the time the fire engine comes and there's no water, as Honorable Mkunu said, uh, perhaps they need to build some reservoirs uh, of water. It doesn't have to be purified water, but some reservoirs of water that can immediately, you know, save the lives and property of people, particularly in rural areas. Thank you. That's why when, as and when we deliberate, we need to also look, I think, the legal advisors and the drafting team the issue around the norms and standards as well. That will empower the minister to also issue norms and standards. And the beauty about this, once this bill is enacted, then we must give also the, the minister the right to then issue regulations to that effect to cover some of those aspects that might not be covered. I think in that way, 
who could have then dealt with the matters because there are certain things that you can't be putting everything in the law as well. Otherwise, you're going to have a very thick law at the end. So if then we must also empower the minister to make regulations, also to set the norms and standards, then it could address all of the concerns. But I'm not speaking on your behalf, Deputy Minister, you need to respond with the team. Over to you. Thank you very much uh, to honorable members and yourself, um, honorable chairperson. Honorable chairperson, um, I have taken note of most of the issues that has been raised, especially uh, what has been written on the chat by Honorable Mudise of handpicking on issues that the department felt that they needed to be responded to. I'm going to work on that because I, I don't have those questions with me now. I have only the responses. But what I can indicate from ourselves, I will, uh, before I, I give to, um, to, to, to DDG, Forestry. I will give to Linda, Linda Kali, who is um, from our legal, uh, um, from our department in the legal branch, where then I think most of the issues that you you have raised has to do then to has legality within it. So I think Linda must assist us in this, that um, she has her team. I saw that uh, her team is also on the platform that they will uh, respond to what has been raised by members, after which then um, our acting uh, DG and DDG will also then try and, and, and respond on some of the issues. But I have taken note on, on the issues that has been raised, especially um, the issues that has to do with the um, fire rangers. Because when I listen to members responding or giving information on that, I was even saying to myself, this is going to help us as a department because we are in the process of um, implementing the forest master plan. And some of the issues that we have mentioned, I think they can be helpful in the implementation of the master plan because the main issues that we are dealing with in the master plan is the issue of security. Now, when you raise the issue of the rangers, then it comes to my mind that uh, we need to look into that. Indeed, uh, Chairperson and, and, and Honorable Singh, each and every piece of legislation uh, or a bill or an amended bill, uh, when it goes to from the cluster to the cabinet, it is uh, funded. There is a budget um, for that. But most of the time, uh, with my experience uh, being uh, in this um, post for quite some time from different departments, uh, you, you get a budget that is accompanying the legislation, but at the end of the day, you discover that after public hearings like now, most of the things that has been raised by the communities, I think that has not been budgeted for, because they would budget for what they have that time. But uh, when it's time then for us then to implement the piece of legislation, we discover that, but this uh, was under budgeted for. But I have taken note of that, I will discuss with my department, and see which of the issues that has been raised that we really need to 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 see whether we can get uh, or uh, get uh, funding for that for that if we agree of course uh, from our legal team can i then through yourself chair give over to linda to respond to some of the issues that has been raised thank you very much Chair Basin. linda you must also deal with this issue of uh, cross-referencing of a wrong act, what happened? I had to <laughs> just uh, navigate and say this is what, but yeah, that's the issue because by the time the bill was presented to Parliament, that act was already signed into law by the President. Okay. Um... Thank you, Chair. I I hope you can see me. My background is a bit dark. Um, I want to, uh, the cross references, of course, the sightings of the acts. We need to uh, fix that, 
and uh, we will do so. And we must also bear in mind that uh, there are consequential amendments. It's not just in one place, but in more than one place. And we must then make sure that the cross references and the sightings of the legislation are correct. That will be done. And um, we will work together with the state law advisor and the parliamentary advisor to do that. In terms of uh, penalties, uh, in uh, inserting new penalties, and offences. Um, uh, as far as uh, organs of state and municipalities and so forth are concerned um, and entities, um, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we are not in favour of it, but we will definitely look at it uh, and discuss it with the state law advisor. One just need to remember that some of these amendments are not included currently in the bill. So they will be new amendments. And uh, the parliamentary law advisor um, alerted us of the National Assembly rule 2864C that we then need to get permission from the uh, the uh, from from the uh, uh, um, from the NA to introduce new amendments. So that needs to be, but we will definitely look at uh, uh, making some proposals in terms of offences after we have consulted the state law advisor and the parliamentary advisors, because that came quite strongly through, but the department is not keen to do that. Um, but we will do and, and propose some amendments and then it can be discussed further. And we will also consult um, uh, those law, state law advisors. Um, the other issue that uh, is of a legal nature, um, the penalties came through. Um, the, the issue of norms and standards and regulations, um, of course, the empowering provisions for those can be included, but um, as I said, that will also be new provisions that are currently not in the bill, and uh, one just need to bear that in mind, but we will then uh, make some suggestions in that regard and discuss it with the state law advisor and the parliamentary advisor. I think those are really all that are uh, genuine of legal nature uh, that as far as the bill is concerned. Uh, the, uh, the other issue that um, uh, we were uh, opposed to including uh, arson is already dealt with in terms of the criminal law and also in terms of the um, a criminal Procedure Act, as we pointed out, but there's still a strong feeling that where fires are started negligently, that that should be covered uh, in terms of the bill, and it came also out strongly today. Um, we will uh, discuss with the state law advisor and also with the parliamentary advisors uh, on the feasibility of this, and we will then uh, suggest some texts um, uh, working together with those. And that is all from my side. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Um, Any other person or the DG? Okay, over to you, uh, Marcella. Thanks, um, Chair and um, DM. In terms of the issues that which are raised relating to the implementation of the bill, we have indicated and are committing that we will develop a support strategy that which will look at aspect of awareness, aspect of equipment, as well as a financial um, related matters. And that is yet to go through um, our governance um, structures internally so that we can have concrete um, solutions in this particular uh, regard. We, we also have indicated um, chair, that we will be um, facilitating accredited uh, training um, to ensure that we have skilled um, 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 
members that which will assist in terms of uh, responding to the failed fires as and when they they happen and i think as the dm has indicated on the rest of the other issues that which we may not necessarily have provided um and and chair has also indicated that because we had um, already responded to them verbally, we had not necessarily included them in the um, responses that which we are providing. We are committing that we will um, draft that and um, submit those in writing uh, formally so that there is a proper record in, in, in that regard. Um, I'm going to request um, Pumeza and, and then followed by Vanessa um, in terms of the other issues that which were raised. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ethan Dichi. Uh, thank you, DM, and thank you to the honorable members for for the questions. <clears throat> um I am just going to try and pick the areas that have not been um, responded to. Okay. Uh, I think the, the input by Honorable Phillips is uh, noted um, that the communities need to be equipped and the acting DG has also uh, uh, touched on that in terms of the support strategy that we are doing. Um, the issue raised, the issues raised by Honorable Weber, uh, relating one to the to the support for uh, the farmers who would uh, want to join the FPAs and uh, would not um, have the necessary um, funding to to be able to pay for the registration fees. Um, I think it, it's something that uh, we, we, we would have to consider as well and see how uh, or what kind of support can we provide uh, uh, towards that. Um, uh, and obviously, depending on the on the size of the land and all of that, but I think also the collaboration that we have with the Department of um, Agriculture, Rural Development, and uh, okay, R Department of Agriculture, Rural Development, and Land Reform, in terms of their support to farmers. Um, so we will also need to look at that and see how uh, their support goes and how we can then, uh, 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 between us as government, augment and ensure that they are able to participate because it is important that they are able to protect the areas that uh, they are managing. Um, I think uh, the one on the fire breaks was a, a comment uh, that uh, the the oh no 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 the the issue of the guideline uh, for fire breaks we will also uh, consider that as part of the guideline documents that we, we we plan to to develop to make sure that there there is that information uh, uh, that is shared uh, to the stakeholders. Um, Um, then there was the, the issue of uh, the, the municipalities, the fire brigade uh, uh, support and uh, how that can be linked uh, into the act or the implementation uh, thereof. As indicated, the COCTA is in a process of uh, amending the fire brigade services act. So what we, we are doing is we are liaising with them. And this is an issue that we will also try and make sure that they include uh, to see how both these acts can um, uh, be aligned and colorate such that there are no gaps um, uh, 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 that are there. And also with the cross-reference cross-referencing that uh, um, Linda has alluded to. So um, if this act is then finalized and then the, their act comes through, there would need to be that cross-referencing from their side um, as well. Um, the issue of um, water, um, I think it's something that we would need to discuss with uh, water 
water affairs and uh, sanitation uh, to see what what kind of support uh, we, we, we can we, we can have on that and what would be a, a, a practical in terms of uh, implementation uh, in consideration that also communities do require the water for for, for, for their daily needs and stuff. So I, I think uh, through also the discussions that we're having in the master plan, it's something that we can bring in as we discuss with, um, with the different stakeholders on uh, the implementation uh, of this act. Um, the issue of the area uh, the alignment of, if, if I understood the question well from uh, Honorable Mkono, the, the issue of the of our reference to an FPA area um, uh, and the alignment to a, a municipal boundary. So we, we take that 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 note that uh, then it assists in terms of as she has indicated that when there's changes in boundaries, then you do not have to then do all these amendments because the, the the FPA is already aligned to 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 the is already aligned to to the municipality to the municipality boundary, and then um, okay, uh, Honourable Bryant raised a cons that uh, an issue about uh, the registration of the FPAs. Um, I think. Uh, through the implementation of the act and this amendment it's something that we are looking at and it's also part of our support a strategy we already have a colleagues that are responsible for uh, fire management in the department that assist in the facilitation uh, process of um, the registration and, and bringing the, the stakeholders uh, together so it's, it's an area that we will need to strengthen and make sure that we we we, we, we are on top of it um the issue of uh, the okay i think linda if i'm not mistaken dealt with the issue of the penalties the issue of the decentralization of the fire brigade uh, services is raised by honorable modese um where uh, and i think it was also honorable Weber, if I'm not mistaken, um, where the, you find that um, there's, there's um, distances in between um, the district municipality and, and the local municipality where the service is required and the time uh, it would take. Uh, I think uh, this is something that uh, the, the, the colleagues in Copter would uh, uh, need to assist us with so that as they amend their act and put in measures in place uh, to support uh, municipalities in terms of fire brigade services these issues can be can be can be addressed um in the issue of cross border fires um the act does provide for support by uh, the minister in terms of creating those uh, fire breaks especially in the in the um cross-border fires in terms of uh, the international uh, uh, spaces. Um, we are already uh, through um, the SADC protocol on forestry, uh, engaging with the different uh, neighboring uh, countries on uh, drafting and uh, agreeing on how uh, this integrated fire management would be dealt with so that it's easier to, to to, to know how to access or, uh, the areas, but also to also encourage them to make sure that they are also fire wise on their side whilst, whilst we are also doing our bit as a country. So we have started these discussions. We have an MOU with uh, Lusutu um, that is uh, 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 currently needs to be implemented. Discussions are currently uh, being uh, commenced with Botswana. Uh, with Mozambique and uh, with uh, Zimbabwe. Um, so that is a, a process that is within the branch in terms of making sure that uh, within the SADC um, a, a protocol on forestry, we, we also are able to deal with um, these issues. Um, okay. Um, Then there was the issue about uh, that was raised by um, Honorable Paulson on 
how the, the public gets to know about, you know, certain things, whether uh, it's the it's the end of uh, of the of, of the term uh, of the board for, uh, of, of the uh, the council or also this information that uh, we are providing. I think uh, it's it, in terms of the awareness part of, of the, 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 the department, it's an area that we've recognized that we need to, to increase our awareness and be out there in, and, and make sure that we share the information as widely as possible. But uh, specifically on the members of the NFAC, which is in the, in the other uh, legislation, um, the act itself um, is specific in terms of um, the, the term of the members of that uh, council. And um, as far as I remember, we had issued out um, the, the, the letters to, to, to the members that were, were, were in the previous board. But uh, it's something that we will follow up on and just make sure that uh, if, if the, the, there was that uh, oversight, we, we ratify it, but it's something that we, 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 we had uh, 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 done. Um, okay, and then I think the Deputy Minister and the Acting DJ have spoken on the issues of funding and on the issues of, of um, areas where we, we might have missed uh, some some responses where we need to expand on and uh, the acting DJ has already made that commitment that we will look uh, into those. I don't know um, if I have missed uh, anything. Uh, I'm sitting with the colleagues here, they are saying no, but Chair, I will be guided by yourselves and the members and maybe the uh, acting DJ and the DM if I've missed uh, anything else. Thank you very much. Colleagues, do we have follow-ups? Vanessa, your microphone is on. You want to say something? Um, thank you, honorable members, uh, uh, Deputy Minister. Um, now I just wanted to, as the acting DG is uh, reflected, um, just to come in from the legal side, I do believe that Advocate Linda Gallup has covered all the legal specific issues and areas. I would just like to uh, reiterate, Chair, uh, that we need to be cautious in terms of duplicating provisions in this Act that may be contained in other pieces of legislation and uh, which may create uh, conflict or uh, areas of uh, interpretation concerns. So what we would do, uh, as um, Linda has indicated, is that we're going to consult with the state law advisors regarding the suggestions made by the various honorable members, which are, are very valid and useful. Uh, and, and look at how we can look at prop, uh, potential suggested uh, texts, but we will be guided by the state law advisor in terms of the proposed amendments. In terms of the request for a detailed response, uh, we will also provide that in terms of uh, the issues that were raised during the public uh, consultation and the meetings. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, but then the, the parliamentary state advisors will also advise because there's nothing that also pass us now as legislatures to put things that we feel they have to be part of the legislation. Uh, but we need to be advised because this issue to say it's not in the current amendment, it cannot be the hard and fast rule because we're still in the process now. I think from the parliament side, that's doable, but we need to be advised to that effect from the parliamentary legal advisor. Because if you are to say again, these things that we think they've been omitted, we need to go again, bring new amendments. You can imagine how long will it take? Just for public participation, you can see how much time we took, including the issue of the bill being brought to you the actual parliament itself. How long did it take? Then, yeah, that, but this is a matter that as and when we move towards the deliberations as the committee, we could have sought also that advice from our parliamentary legal services. As Chileka has said to say they are not available, I think post this meeting, we're going to write to them to 
also respond to us in writing so that when we reconvene, you also bring in the other items that you feel they were not adequately responded to. Then we'll be able to then meet and deal with all those outstanding issues. Colleagues, is there any follow up? I don't see any end. It could have been one of what the shortest meetings we've ever held. Eh? Oh, Honorable Mbisa, send it up. Over to you, colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, no, no, Chair, I, I thought I must just make an emphasis on, on, on two points. <clears throat> One, uh, it, it is our understanding that we helped, we had people traveling with us from, from the department. Um, and it is our conviction that they were taking notes. So it cannot be overemphasized that um, um, that hand picking thing. Uh, it's not welcome. Um, there must be a comprehensive response to all the issues uh, that were raised because um, we were cautioned in some of the provinces that uh, this should not be seen as a tick box exercise. Um, and we don't want to come across as people who take the views of the communities for granted. So it's against that background that we must make this emphasis and overemphasizes and re-emphasize. Uh, let's get a comprehensive response of whatever issues that have um, arisen from this public uh, hearings. But lastly, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, we are very conscious of the interpretation of the of statutes. Um, um, this is not a direct response to Vanessa, but uh, we, are, we are very conscious ourselves too of of how um, there's uh, cross cutting uh, of of legal matters. Um, we, we think the entire jurisprudence. So, so some of these things were raising, uh, not because they were they are raising from public hearings, uh, but we have also applied our minds and we we know what we what we desire of this of, of this act and and what is the overall objective that we want to see. Lastly, is the issue of cigarette parts and penalties and fines. I did I did not hear a response to that. Thank you very much, Professor. Yes, can you respond to the issues that uh, you didn't respond to on the issue of the cigarette and the stuff? And then the other issue, like he has indicated, one was at pains to explain, to say we are here to listen to you as communities. And they, because they will say it's a tick box exercise. You know you are killing your pains. You just do this and then we'll never hear anything from you. And that assurance that we made to the community to say they have used matters, then they are going to be incorporated. The beauty about it, Honorable Mudi, it's us as the legislatures that we need to make sure that all those relevant critical inputs that were raised by communities are incorporated in this bill. Because if we don't do that, those our electorates will be failing the people. But can I allow the team to respond to your issue around cigarettes? If it's also a matter that we need to also consider, if the, the Vanessa or, or, or is it Linda will still say this is a new amendment, these are the matters that as a committee we need to take further. But let me give it to the officials to respond to it. Okay. Uh Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Honorable Modisi. Um, I have indicated that we will discuss the amendment uh, in respect to the cigarette. Uh, of, of course, I agree. We need to fully respond to all your issues. And uh, we have to show that we have considered all uh, the inputs received and 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 uh, indicate very clearly uh, why we agree with something, disagree, and what we suggest and why we suggest that that will happen.
Robin, uh, we have a part from the presentation. We have also provided you with a table and we will definitely um, uh, consult with uh, uh, the parliamentary officials to see to what extent did we miss issues and some of our officials attended hearings and of course we will address all the issues. In relation to the amendments in respect of the penalties, we have indicated that arson is already um, dealt with in terms of the Criminal Procedure Act, so we will have to consult with the state law advisor to what extent we can include it in this bill and, and how far we can go. So that will we will do that and then at the next meeting we will definitely make recommendations um, to the committee. Okay. You must respond to the committee, as you have said that, that detailed a response, it will be required. I'm trying to look Chileka on the program. Yes, Chair. That program that you shared with me, I'm trying to quickly get it so that we talk to it, uh, but you can uh, use it. You can also assist because uh, today is the second. It's first. the first day, and our next meeting is on the 22nd after members come back from the COP. Yeah, so that's the issue that you say on that 22nd day of the meeting, you could have, you could have then, in fact, what we can do, let's give you an opportunity to fully. And provide the detailed responses, né? and you send it to members while they're at COP. So that come the meeting of the 22nd, then the members could be then, uh, because we need to, yeah, in fact, we need to consider this report in terms of the, of the, of the, yeah, that's the issue. Yeah. Then, yeah, we'll use this virtual meeting to also consider that and also deal with all those items that are there. Uh, yeah, those are the issues. We'll have also sought legal advice, Shilega, from the yes, parliamentary yes. legal services to say, but I'm still convinced because I've done bills before. Mm -hmm. There are matters that might not be covered in the bill when the department, but SMPs were able to put them in the bill. I've done several bills in my lifetime as a member of parliament. It's done, it's doable. But let's just get that legal opinion in line with what the officials are saying. It's not in the bill, but as this parliament, we are allowed. That's why the bill is brought to us so that we add and put other stuff as we legislate. Yeah, that's the issue that we... Honorable Brian. Thanks. Thanks very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, um, if, you, if you would allow me, I, I would just like to raise one... Um, potential proposal uh, in terms of our um, agenda as it's set out. Um, we have the in-committee uh, meeting with the minister on the Rhino Horn stockpiles uh, penciled in for the 2nd of December. Um, now, I would just want to propose, and I'm happy to take guidance you know, from yourself and other members, that we potentially look at switching that to the Tuesday, um, which I think is the 29th, um, where we have that potential Knopflux crawl um, oversight. Reason being on the Thursday, that is our last uh, plenary session and farewell speeches and all of that. And I'm aware that some members might be flying back to their constituencies or planning to um, on the Friday, the second. Um, and just in the interest of ensuring that we can have as many members present as possible, because it's quite an important meeting, um, that uh, we potentially look at at doing that meeting on the on the Tuesday. Um, I mean, I'm sure we could potentially even do both. Um, uh, you know, if it's if it's if it's possible. Um, but I just want to put that on the table, just considering the fact that the Thursday is is. That final plenary session. Thanks, Chair. Okay. 
This Honorable Singh sent. You want to yes, talk Honorable. to the proposal, Honorable Singh? Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chair. But I just want to agree with Honorable Bryant. When I looked at the second, I just thought that's going to be a busy day for all of us. Uh, budgets, voting, et cetera, et cetera. So can we reconsider the second? Thank you. Okay, colleagues. The second. Any other contrary view? I think there's consensus to the second. Considering also it's a Friday, that second of December. Weber? Jay, sorry, I, I, I just have one question and it is very inappropriate. I just have this question on, um, I would love to go to Khrabah and Klo Club because I think it's, it is a very important thing to do. My question is, spending the money going there, but that is, as far as I know, not a DFFE issue anymore, as the minister made it clear that they have pulled out totally from this. So I, I, I just want to know if if it is still appropriate for the committee to go there, rather than I don't have a problem to going there, but you, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Thank you. No, that's the decision of the committee that you want to do it. Yeah? I don't know why, where is the out of order, the, 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 then that won't be appropriate. And then the way I look at the date as well is the 29th. There's also these other items that are being put for. I think that's the method that you're going to deal with after planner at 28, 20 hours. You still do what you want to do on that morning of the 29th. Then thereafter, deal with all these agenda items later. 18 hours to 20 hours. That's how I understood it to be. Am I wrong, colleagues? That's why, because that decision, but okay, let me just throw it to you. That decision was taken in a meeting that you need to visit that post you are, what you, 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 you received on the briefings. I was writing on that day. Would you say assist me on this oversight thing? You are correct, Chair. I was just wondering because it's after we've made the decision that the Minister um, said that there's no involvement. I have no problem on going. It, it, it would be great. I'm just saying that, um, I mean, after the whole meeting, we uh, were told that um, the FF is not involved there anymore. But it's not a problem to go. I was just thinking, why? That's all. I was, my mind was just going. Thank you. That's why I'm requesting the other members that were in the meeting to assist. It's you again who's raising these issues. Honorable Phillips, Honorable Mutisa, can you assist us in this matter? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I know that the Minister did say that it's not really her responsibility, but the court case and, and the judgments were did involve her as well. And I think that it is our duty because it was a forest that was actually destroyed. And we need to find out why it was destroyed, who allowed, who allowed it to be destroyed, and its forestry jobs that, that were lost. Um, so and, and also the other thing is that it is the biosphere there that is being very badly affected by this land invasion, and it could possibly lose its status um, as a, a, a biosphere. So I think even though we might not actually be involved, as in the minister says she's given it over to public works, I don't think that we should by any chance wash our hands off it. I think we've got to, we, we've now got to be there to make sure that we um, ensure that the environment is protected there at all times. Thank you. That's the thing to say. This is a consequence of the meetings that we started. The one where the minister was in was the follow-up meeting, and it will be good to close up this matter so that even those that don't know the place, because like myself, when we were driving to, where is it, the Remanas? Honorable Brian was able to share show us this is the place we've been discussing about in the meeting. And it was an eye opener to me. Would you say you want to assist so that we close this matter and close the meeting as well and release the poor officials? 
Thank you, Chair. I, the resolve of that meeting was that um, we will first have a an 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 an, an in committee meeting. Uh, uh, so the evening meeting was to deal with issues of rhinos and uh, the poaching and stuff. Uh, that, that that's the resolution of the in committee meeting. For this, uh, I'm not but then the issue but of honourable this. No. We're talking about the oversight uh, on yes, the proscribed sites in Krablo, not the in yes, committee yes. meeting. The in committee meeting is not an issue. We all agree it has to take place. The oversight, the question that I raised was in relation to the oversight in the North Falls Cry site. That's the issue here. What did you resolve? We agreed that we will go. Yes. Proceed. Proceed, Proceed sir. Yes. We agreed that we will go to North Falls Cry. We, we received the report that. Uh, that the Department of Forest, Fisheries and Environment was giving over the land back to the, to the Department of Public Works. Now, our understanding is that this is a process. I agree with honorable members that says we're not completely um, uh, out of the, uh, the radar as yet. So, so the, the actual resolution there was that we will go to Nova Skral as part of oversight to actually see for ourselves on what is happening. The concern was that the number of um, invasions there are increasing, etc., etc. So we wanted to go and satisfy ourselves over and above what we are receiving as, in a form of reports. So we are great on going to to, to Hrabo. Okay, fuck it. So the resolution is this. You moving the items on the second? Yes. All the items you must dispose them off on the evening of the 29th. That's the resolution. Yes. So when you come back from uh, Knox in Hrablo, then the meeting there can deal with this. So you can then, yeah. Depending on the organization, Hrabo is not that far from Cape Town. Yeah, that's the issue there. That's Chair, the can, I just, Chair yeah. can I just say from our side, thank you, That's that works perfectly, and I think, uh, yeah, excellent, thank you. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. So it means then, uh, yeah, that's how the program is like. It's our last meeting uh, post uh, before COP. Then we'll reconvene on the 22nd. And that will be my last meeting with your colleagues when you come back from COP. But we'll talk about it then on the 22nd. Thank you so much, dear colleagues. Enjoy. Thank you, Jefferson. Enjoy the rest of your day. Those that are going to Egypt, make sure that you represent Thank the you, country. Sir. Make sure that you represent the country and learn a lot to bring the best practices back to the country. Enjoy COP27. Be safe. Thank you, Come Jefferson. Thank you, colleagues. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. I will take, I will take care of all things. Elega, please send us the amended program. Yeah. yeah.